Hello everyone, Fox here, and it's time to talk about the brand new update that's coming out pretty soon called Choose Your Own Apocalypse. It was talked about today, March 12th, on both the Inside Xbox show and for one hour in a stream that Undead Labs hosted. What I'm going to do is paraphrase what they talked about, and then I'm going to give some maybe a little bit of theory-crafted ideas, maybe some preliminary strategies based on what I've heard. This is probably also where I should say that whenever there is news, it first gets posted on my social media. You can follow me at GetGoodFox, both on Facebook and on Twitter. I always post the updates there before I take the time to make a video. Anyways, in the background, we have the developers playing on the brand new difficulty in glorious 360p. That was the best I could do for the video rip, so whatever. Anyways, let's get started. The update is going to be coming out on March 26th, so you've got some time to prepare. It's adding two new difficulty modes, the first of which is called the Dread Zone, and the second of which is called the Nightmare Zone. The Dread Zone is a slightly higher difficulty where everything is a little bit harsher, while the Nightmare Zone is supposed to be really hard where they're going to add quite a few new features that neither the Dread Zone nor the normal game mode contains. I'm mainly going to be talking about the Nightmare Zone tuning and balancing. So, for example, in the Dread Zone, I believe the Blood Plague kills you in 30 minutes, while Nightmare Zone kills you in 10 minutes. So if there are any differences between Dread and Nightmare Zone, I'm just going to be talking about the Nightmare Zone. So the way the new difficulty works is you can go into the new difficulty three ways. You can start a brand new community and just choose to play in one of the three difficulties, Normal, Dread, and Nightmare. You can convert an existing community into a higher difficulty, or you could wind up joining a multiplayer host who is on a higher difficulty. The game will let you know that you will be entering into either a Dread Zone or a Nightmare Zone, which gives you a chance to back out if you don't want the increased difficulty. They said that there are no new rewards in this game mode, but the existing rewards can be obtained faster. I'm not sure if that includes rare weapon drops. And you can use all of the DLC that you own. You can also use your legacy boons, but you will need to re-unlock them for each difficulty. However, if you unlock them on a harder difficulty, they will retroactively unlock on lower difficulties. And lastly, I do want to mention that they talked very, very briefly about the Return to Trumbull County DLC later on this year. And all they said is that they will confirm that it is a new playable map. I guess they also more or less said that it's not super far in development, as in they really have absolutely nothing to show about it. Anyways, let's talk about some of the specific features you can expect in this new increased difficulty. Remember, I'm mainly talking about the Nightmare, which is the highest difficulty, the Nightmare Zone. So when you get fully infected with Blood Plague, you can expect to die in 10 minutes. The hordes are bigger, and you can expect to see armored zombie hordes, packs of feral zombies, groups of bloaters called bloater pods, groups of screamers called screamer choirs, and juggernaut groups. There are no regular juggernauts anymore. All juggernauts are plague juggernauts. Plague hearts are harder. They've got more health. They call for more zombies, but they make it seem like you're going to get a lot more loot from them. And they sort of alluded that maybe you get more than just blood plague samples, but they didn't confirm that for certain. Survivors eat 1.5 food per day, up from the typical one per day on this new difficulty, so it'll stress your food supply more. You cannot see zombies on your radar anymore without some kind of dedicated effect that detects zombies, such as having the scouting skill. Hostile humans can now headshot you. The developer didn't seem to have all the details on what the headshot does to you, but he did say that it shouldn't kill you outright in one hit. It seems like it's going to be more of a critical hit where it's going to do a huge amount of damage and possibly down you in one hit. Guns are louder, so zombies can hear you at a further distance, and they're supposed to be programmed to remember sounds more effectively. In addition to that, it means that silenced weapons are not nearly as effective as they used to be, but still drastically more effective than firing an unsilenced weapon. Zombies do more damage. There was a part where a normal zombie bit one of the developers, and he suffered an injury and lost about a third of his health. 
There are less resources on the map and fewer cars. And there might be a few more changes that I overlooked, but those are the ones that I took my notes on. So let's talk a little bit about strategy because I'm going to jump directly into the nightmare difficulty with a fresh group of survivors so that we're not bringing anything to the maximum difficulty. Immediately, I'm thinking that agriculture is going to be really valuable as people are going to eat a ton of food, and I think even having the large level 3 farm is going to be worth it. Plague juggernauts cause a lot of infection, so you're probably going to want to carry a plague cure just as standard gear on all of your characters now. The pharmacology skill, which is an upgraded form of chemistry, is probably going to be really useful because it allows you to produce a lot of medicine cheaper, including plague cures. The heavy ammo press and a 50 caliber sniper rifle is going to be a really big deal. That's just the most efficient way to deal with juggernauts, especially large quantities of them. I think the traitor leader is going to be the best leader because while you're going to be fighting a large quantity of zombies, it means you're going to be gaining a ton of influence. And having that traitor leader lets you spend influence the most efficiently. And lastly, I think the little miscellaneous disposable items like distractions and flash Flashbangs and smoke grenades are going to become a lot more important. Distractions are valuable because obviously they distract the normal zombies, and flashbangs are useful because they do stun the advanced zombies. Advanced zombies, they are not affected by distractions, so you can't use it to distract a feral or a juggernaut. So having smoke grenades or flashbangs, they might become your new best friend in this increased difficulty. But hey, that is that. The patch notes are not out yet. They're supposed to launch on the same day that the update does, so on the 26th of this March. So we'll just have to wait until then. Anyways, like this video if it was helpful or entertaining. Subscribe to my channel for future State of K2 content. And remember that you don't have to be good to get good.